line. We had such a wonderful time on the first hour. We had Doctors uh, Gregory and Dr. Belinda Simmons from the Rock Church of Greenville, and we was talking about a new normal. How you know through this pandemic that God has place us all in a place where we are doing things new, we are doing things differently now, but you know what, we know that God is with us. I read a scripture on the first hour and it's lifted from Isaiah 43 and 19. It says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way into wilderness and rivers in the desert. I love that scripture because God is letting us know that he's got us. He's protecting us. He's with us. Isaiah names means uh, the Lord saves. Right there, just the name is enough to encourage our hearts tonight, to know that we can put all our trust in God, that he will never leave us nor will he forsake us. And I want to encourage somebody, even with that tonight, to let you know that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be weary. You don't have to um, just wring your hands and we can put our trust in Almighty God. He's with us. And one thing that I want you to know tonight, if God be for us, who can be against us? If the Lord is on our side, if he's fighting our battles for us, we don't have to get into the fight. We can trust him to walk in victory. God will give us complete victory tonight. He's on our side. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our soon-to-come King. He is our way maker. Is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. I know we had people to call in on the first hour and they was talking about the different things that they're going through in their lives and in their bodies. They need strength, they need healing. Uh, somebody called in and said it was lonely. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit tonight is your comforter. He's right there with you. Wherever you are, whatever you might be doing tonight, Put your trust in God. Just raise your hands and say, Lord, I love you and I know that you have me. Right now, we're getting ready to go back to the blank and ships and they're going to be singing, Long as I've got King Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, rebuked, scorned, talked about your as you born. I've been up, down, almost to the ground. But long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, long, long, long as I got King I don't need nobody else. else. I've been lied on, lied on cheated, cheated. As I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, long, long, long as I got I don't need King nobody else. else. Well, I don't need, don't need nobody, nobody else. else. Don't need nobody else. I don't need, I don't need nobody else. else. So no mother, mother, father, father no sister, sister, no brother, brother, no doctor, doctor no lawyer, lawyer, no preacher, preacher no teacher. teacher. As long as I got my Jesus. Long as I got my Jesus, long, long, long as I got I don't need nobody, nobody else. Well, I don't need, don't need nobody, nobody else. else. Don't need nobody else. I don't need, I don't need nobody, nobody else. else. So don't mother, mother, father, 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 Do you know what I mean? I've been lying on, lying on cheated, 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 talked about, mistreated, rebuked, rebuked scorned, scorned, talked about, talked about, about you know, all up, 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 down, down, almost to the ground. But long, 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 long,
got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. He'll be a burden bearer. He'll be a heavy load sharer. He'll be a bridge of my water. He'll be a doctor and a lawyer. He'll be the bread when you're hungry. He'll be the comfort when you're lonely. Long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, long, long as I got King Jesus. the Blankenship thing. as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. And I tell you what, if that don't put a clapping in your hands and you're stomping in your feet, oh my God, I thank God for them tonight. I thank God for just singing songs of inspiration and, and encouragement, uh, songs that will lift you up no matter where you are. Uh, like I said, on the first hour, we talked about uh, a new thing that God was doing but tonight I want to talk about a new birth, <laughs> a new birth. So I want to, I want you to turn your Bibles with me at home uh, to the book of John, the third chapter, uh, the first through the seventh verse. And it reads, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, my God, <laughs> he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. I think I'm going to say that again. You must be born again. You must be. I want you to look at somebody. I don't know who you sit next to at home. Maybe you got a loved one and they're not saved. I don't know what's going on, but tell them you must be born Again, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. And the word of God said he came to Jesus by night. Now, that was different interpretations as I was studying this word. Why did he come by night? And some one interpretation, one commentator said, well, maybe he was embarrassed to come during the day. Or maybe he just wanted to have a long talk with Jesus all by himself. But can I tell you, can I tell somebody tonight that it doesn't matter what time of the day or night you come, as long as you come, as long as you come to Jesus, amen, praise God. He wants you to come. In fact, Matthew 11, 28 and 29 reads, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. I want to tell somebody tonight, 
that all you got to do is go to Jesus. It doesn't matter what time or the day or the night. His line is never busy. He wants us to, he wants us to come. He wants us to come and just talk with him. He's there for you. He's there for us. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I need you. I do that all the time. I do, sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> and I'll get up and I'll, I'll kneel down on the side of my bed and I say, Lord, it may be two or three o'clock in the morning, but I'm coming right now because I need you. Maybe God want me to pray for somebody. Maybe he want me to pray for my children. I don't know what be going on in my life at that time, but I just crawled out of the bed and said, Lord, I need you. Have mercy on me. Oh God, and I pray until I get an answer from God. Nicodemus referred to Jesus as rabbi, but he also referred to him as teacher. How many know Jesus was more than just a teacher? Oh my God, he was the son of the living God. In uh, the book of Matthew 16 and 16, Jesus asked his disciples, <laughs> he said, whom do men say that I am? His disciples said, some said that you are John the Baptist, some Elias, one, some, one of the, some said one of the prophets, some, some, some of them said Jeremiah, but Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? Oh my God. And Peter, he said, you are Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh my God. That's one thing that Jesus wanted Nicodemus to know that he wasn't just a prophet, that he wasn't just a teacher, but he was the son of the living God. Oh my God, I want somebody at home to know that tonight, that we serve a mighty God. We serve a good God. We serve an all-powerful God, and there's nothing too hard for him. I, I feel the Holy Spirit tonight because somebody need to know that tonight. We've heard so many things over the years. We've heard Jesus called by so many names, but I want you to know that he is the son of the living God. We just celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus hung on that cross. He shed his blood for us that we would have a right to the tree of life. He is the son of the living God. There were two thieves hanging beside him. One railed at him. The other said, remember me when you come into your father's kingdom. He said, this day, you should be with me in paradise. That's what he was trying to tell Nicodemus. He said, you got to be born again so you can come into my father's kingdom when the Lord calls your name. Come on, somebody. There's somebody at home right now. You have not given your life to Christ. You have not given your heart to God. But I want to tell somebody by the spirit of the living God that you must be. You got to be born again. Somebody say born again. You got to be born again. You got to accept Jesus into your heart as your personal savior. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And you know what Jesus said unto him? He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, Peter. He said, that was revealed, revealed to you by my father which is in heaven. Oh my God. How many know when you, when you are born again, the Holy Spirit can talk to you. Yeah. Oh my God. The Holy Spirit will share things with you. Yeah. Oh my God. The Holy Spirit will let you know I'm here for you, that you are mine and I'm yours. My God, God wants a relationship with us. Yeah. He wants a relationship with us. Amen. That's what he was trying to tell Nicodemus. God wants a relationship with you. And if you're going to come to God, you got to come to him through his son, Jesus. We can't come up any other way. The word of God says we come to God any other way than through the name of Jesus or through his son, Jesus. We're the same as a thief and a robber. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. We need the Lord tonight. We got to be born again. Nicodemus asked Jesus a question. He said, can a man enter the second time into his mother's womb? He didn't understand. See, can I tell you, can I help somebody tonight? When you are not saved... <laughs> 
when you don't have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, when you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you cannot understand the things of God. A carnal man cannot discern the spiritual things of Almighty God. A carnal, man, a carnal minded man can't comprehend what the Spirit of God is saying. Ezekiel 36 and 26, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and I will put a spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. My God, my God, and my God. Won't God do it? Won't he do it? Amen. Praise God. I remember when I was 12 years old, I went to this little church. One of my friends invited me to go to church with her one night. It was having revival. And I went to the church, and we were sitting there in the church, and the pastor was preaching. And I had never seen or heard anything like the way he was preaching before. Somebody was on the piano. Oh, they was backing him up, too, on that piano. And the pastor said, you little girls right there, y'all want to get saved? We said, yeah, we want to get saved. They said, come on down to the altar. We went down to the altar. Oh, my God, the mothers in the church came around us, and they told us what to do. They said, tell God to save you. Some, listen to me, somebody. God just wants you to get saved tonight. He said, tell God to save you. We raised our hands to the Lord. We said, save us, Jesus. Save us. Save us. Honey, I tell you what the truth is. Tears start coming out of my eyes. Oh, my God. I, I don't know how to say this, but snot can't start coming out of my nose. Oh, my God. I just, it was, whew. Thank you, Lord God. I can feel it now. I can feel the Holy Spirit right now because God is moving in this place tonight. And I'm telling you, when you get saved, when you get born again, you ain't the same person you, that you used to be. You're not the same woman. You're not the same man. Oh, my God. You're different. You're different than what you used to be. God will give you a new heart. He'll take out that old heart. The old heart of sin, the old heart of saying, I want things done my way. And God will give you a new heart, a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of walking. Somebody said, when they got saved, they said, I looked at my hands. My hands looked new. I looked at my feet, and they did too. Well, I looked at my hands. They didn't look new. My feet didn't look new. But on the inside, on the inside, I tell you, God made a new change in my life. I don't want to go the same places I used to go. I don't want to do the same things I used to do. I'm a, I'm a woman that's free. I'm a newborn creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, my God, God saved me. He sanctified me. A lot of times people say, well, if I get saved, I can't. I can't, I can't party no more, <laughs> or I can't go to the club anymore, or it's, it's still some things, I ain't, ain't, ain't finished living yet. But can I tell you this? We don't know what tomorrow brings. If we see tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised to us. We was talking about on the first hour about this pandemic. We was talking on the first hour about how people are going through bereavement, hurt, pain and devastation. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Tomorrow is not promised to us. We have got to get right with God now. Jesus said, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. You got to, you got to give your heart and your life to God. That's what he was saying to Nicodemus, that you got to change. You got to be different. You got to turn over and said, Lord, I love you, and I need you in my life. I want you to come into my heart, and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior in the name of Jesus. That same night, my little friend and I, we were just shouting and praising and dancing all over the church. We was having, you know, 
we still dance with his changed partners. Come on, somebody. We just changed partners. Jesus was our partner. And we was praising God. And we were lifting up the name of Jesus. The same night, the pastor said, you little girls just got saved. So y'all want to get sanctified? Say, we didn't know what sanctification was. But if it made us feel in a way like getting saved was, we said, yes, we want to get sanctified. They said, come on back down to the altar. We went back down to the altar again. Come on, somebody. And we stretched our hands to the Lord. And we said, Lord, sanctify us. Sanctification is just when the Holy Spirit sets you apart to do a work for him. During that time, I was just 12 years old. But can I tell you that God was already getting ready to do a work in my life? I didn't have a clue back then at 12 years old that I was going to be preaching right here on Nightline tonight. I didn't have a clue what God had in, my, in store for my life. But you know what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says? It says, for I know the plan that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future and an expected end. When you get saved, when you come to a new, cre you become a new creation in Christ, the old things, the old ways pass away. You don't want to look the same. You don't want to do the same. You don't want to go to the same places. Amen. Praise God. And if after you get saved, and if you falter or fail along the way, we have an advocate with the Father. We can go to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I strayed. I messed up. Just like that prodigal son. He came back home. The word of God said he came to himself. He found himself in a pig's pen. He said, my father got all this food and cattle and servants at home, and here I am out here starving. The Bible said he came to him and said, he said, I'm going back home. I need to tell somebody tonight, I think that you have strayed away from God. I feel in my spirit that you have. But all you got to do is say, I'm going back home. Yes. I'm picking up and I'm going back. I'm going back to my first love. Don't ever leave your first love. Jesus is your first love. He's there for you. So, Lord, I need you right now. I messed up. I strayed away from you. But I'm coming back home. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and Jesus began to talk to him. He didn't, come, he didn't answer Nicodemus for what he wanted. Jesus said, you must be born again, my God. I want to encourage somebody's heart tonight. Jesus is with you. If he be for you, who can be against you? The Lord is on your side. The next night, we went back to the revival. And the pastor said, you little girls want to get the Holy Ghost? We didn't know what the Holy Ghost was, but yes, sir, we wanted it. We went back to that mourner's bench. They told us, they said, the Holy Ghost come on a happy train. I know that you might not understand what that meant, because we didn't. But it means that when you give yourself over to God, and say, Lord, here am I, use me. I give myself away to you tonight. All that I am, all that I hope to be, I give myself to you. The Holy Ghost came upon us. We saw speaking in tongues and praising God. Oh, my God, 12 years old. The next morning, my mother had to write my teacher a note <laughs> to take to the school with me. She said, my daughter got saved. My daughter got sanctified. My daughter got filled with the Holy Ghost. So if she start acting up in class today, <laughs> if she start praising God, if she start speaking in tongues, oh my God, just know that the Holy Ghost is in her life. That comforter, our peace, our joy, our hope is in the Holy Ghost. Jesus told Nicodemus, 
You must be born again. Listen, don't take a chance with your soul tonight. Don't take a chance. Don't gamble with your soul tonight. But turn to God and say, Lord, I love you. I want to accept you into my heart as my Lord, as my Savior, and as my Redeemer. I love you, Lord God. I messed up. I've done some things that I shouldn't have done. I went some places that I shouldn't have gone. But Lord, I'm coming to you just as I am. And I know when I come to you, you will in no wise cast me out. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. One thing the Holy Spirit wanted me to share with you tonight. It says when a baby is born, that baby gets a birth certificate. But when you get born again, you get a birth covenant. Oh, my God. I see you get a birth covenant. And that covenant is in Christ Jesus. Genesis 17 and 7 said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout this generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. Oh, my God, I love it because not only will he give us a new covenant, but he'll write our name in the Lamb's book of life. He'll write our name in the Lamb's book of life. If you gave your heart to the Lord tonight, after listening to this message, call the prayer partners tonight and let them know, I've been born again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church bodies say, amen and amen and amen.